Welcome to another He Said, She Shed. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm already said. excited. He <laughs> said. The, 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 I clear my throat and spit right there. So another He Said, She Said with Ron Johnson and Denise Lewis. So those that know me, it's the first time tuning in. My name is Ronald Johnson. And I'm my fullness coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And if you're facing difficulty in transition, your career, relationships, and it's affecting every aspect of your life from happiness to uh, depression, even, this is where I can help you. Today, I got my coffee. I'm staying warm. You know, it's cold. I think Denise has Coke and a smile. I do have Coke and a smile, always. Coke and a smile. Uh, there you go. It's already <laughs> there. My coffee, I think, halfway done. It's still a little bit left, huh? and I like it black. So, Denise, those first time tuning in, who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm Denise Lewis and welcome to my she shed. <laughs> you started it, Ron. I'm going to say it all it, day it came now. up. It came by. I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh, you, you are envious of my she shed and that's okay. Um, I have a business called GrandSlamCoaching.com and I am a performance-based coach, be it on the athletic field, in the boardroom, in the classroom, in the courtroom. However, I can help you make your any any performance you you have coming up better and find the best you that you can be and and that's what i do and today's topic is really going to resonate with me because this is kind of about me today <laughs> and you're going to find out why in just a minute so i'm and i can be reached at grandslamcoaching.com because i want you to have every day be a grand slam day so ron ready let's Oh, I, I take, it away. Come on. take it out Come on. Boom. Asleep the it's switch back and it's back and back, it's back, it's back. It's gone it's good. <laughs> <laughs> i like i like now it's gone it's gone I mean, school uh when you see baseball it's back it's back guys running guys running to catch it's back it's gone looks down oh, it's gone <laughs> yeah it's gone it's gone well i think this is podcast what number six or number seven hmm Seven, yes, magic number lucky seven. seven okay. Seven, baby. You gotta get that okay. lucky seven, right? <laughs> yep, lucky seven, baby. Blow on those dice. Let's go with it. Okay, so today's topic, and all of us can resonate with this at every facet line, especially career. It's a lot of that. So embracing failure and reducing consequences. Mm -hmm. So I like to always start with an example. When I had my full-time career, and I've talked about this countless times, but if you're new, you're going to hear it again. Our company, the company I work for, Fry's Electronics, had, I would consider, a fear-based proposition. So the idea was the more I get you scared, the more you perform. So yes, you can perform very quickly and long periods of time off of fear. Because your fear of getting fired, your fear of failing, your fear of looking bad, your fear of uh, for at Fry's, they didn't like having closed door meetings with you one on one. They would berate you right in front of 50 people, literally. Oh, the executive that's... vice president, yeah, the executive vice president who was arrested for embezzlement had no problem berating a manager, a director, or even you in front of everybody. Had no problem doing it. Well, thank God he got arrested for embezzlement. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. out of the picture, done, boom. And he was about five foot three and 120 pounds, short and sawed off. <laughs> That's yeah. the best way to describe it. <laughs> but you know what? When we have a job or a career, we have a failure, right? The failure can be, I want to get the, the best review, right? I want to get exceed expectations, not meet expectations. We're getting a new role in that, hey, we're trying this new role out because a lot of companies like play this game, which you'll talk about, Denise. Okay, we have this new role coming up. Let's get Billy, Bob, and Sue. Let's get them all to compete against each other and may the best gal or a guy win. Okay, first of all, if you want someone to be successful, you get them a job, you see if they can succeed. If they don't succeed, you help them out. If they don't succeed, you help them out. They eventually say, look, Bob, it's not working out, but this whole compete thing can create a lot of uh, inconsistencies because you're scared. You walk into work scared. When I would go to Fry's, I was scared. Okay, it's Monday morning. <sighs> they hit my numbers. They hit my numbers. Log in. Oh, they hit my numbers. Shit. Okay, good. Because I don't have to worry about bullshit lies to come up with the reason why I didn't hit my numbers and why I failed. Right. right. So some people don't want to hear the truth. So. That's my experience. Now, Denise, let's talk about your experience right now about failure. Well, failure, 
even if you're not anticipating failure, you know, when you wake up and you have that dread about going to work or there's a big meeting today, you're like, oh my God, I just want it to be over. It's because deep down, I feel that you're feeling and experiencing the imminent failure that's going to come. It may be defined, it may be undefined, but there's ways to work through it and embrace it and kind of cushion your fall and minimize the consequences. So here's the example that I've been going through the last couple of days. I've recently been promoted at my Safeway store to be the person in charge. Now, I've only been person in charge one shift so far. Tonight is my second shift in charge. And normally I have department heads and an assistant manager until 9 p.m. Store closes at 11. I found out two days ago, yes, I'm the person in charge tonight. I do not have a front end manager. I do not have a deli manager. I do not have a floral manager. I don't have a bakery or a dairy manager. I have no assistant manager. And the store manager will be there when I get in at 2.30 and usually leaves at three o'clock. Oh, man. So I have no one. The jack of all trades, master of none, or, or how does that go? Denise of all <laughs> trades, master of all of them. <laughs> oh, I love that. Master love of all that. Slam. So, okay. So as the person in charge, it is my responsibility not only to make sure all the department heads are doing their jobs and making the store look pretty. I have to make the store look pretty before I go. Fine, I can do that. I have no department heads to lean on. So I have to do my job and I have to make sure that their staff is doing their job. So I have to be like seven people tonight. All by myself. So on the one hand, I feel like I've been set up for failure mm-hmm. because it's not right that, you know, a month from now when I've done a, a couple of dozen shifts, pff, no problem in the bag, nothing but net. This is day two, <laughs> shift number right. two of me being in charge. So I've been working the last couple of days about, okay, what do I need to do to prepare myself? Number one, I'm going to go in and know that I'm going to give it my best effort as I always do. Number two, I know enough about each of the different departments of how they need to be. And I'm just gonna make sure that everything looks pretty and nice. That's all I can do. Mm. And the only other thing I can do is make sure the milk, the eggs and the water are all stocked up and hope to God that night crew is all on time at 10 PM and that I can delegate some of this stuff to them. I know how to run the front end because I've been on the front end for the last year. So. Just make sure that all the sweeps are hit, that the store is actually being um, swept, that all the toilets are clean and that the baskets are in by 11 o'clock and that everything's clean. That's all I can do. This is all I can do. So they are going to find fault with whatever I do today when they do their walkthrough tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to, so now I've been ranking in my head what is most important and what are the things that I have to let go of and that are least important on the part is the cold box stocked with the drinks that people come and go, well, you know what, if that's not totally full, that's not as important as making sure that all the baskets are inside so they don't get stolen, they're sanitized and they're all stacked up by the doors. Mm-hmm. It's important that all the carts are in and not in the corrals and the parking lot's clean, but you know what, guess what? If the seafood case isn't faced properly, I can't do anything about that. So. I've been working through how do I minimize my consequences? So I went from a feeling of dread on Wednesday of, oh, shit, I can't believe they're throwing me in the fire to I've got this as best I can. And if they don't like it, then you know what? That's just the way it is. Because if you're not going to give me any support, if you're not going to give me the tools I need to do my job, and you're not going to train me how to order, you're not going to train me how to do drive up and go, then I'm going to keep all the staff there to do what needs to be done so that I don't, that's one less thing I have to worry about. Mm-hmm. And if it's like, like uh, yeah, it, it sounds like to me out of the frying pan, out of the frying pan into the fire. Absolutely. <laughs> With no protective gear whatsoever, no fire no. extinguisher, no fire crew. Nothing. I just have to hope that the store doesn't burn down, that the power doesn't go out because it's raining. Right. And hopefully we won't get any homeless people doing something stupid tonight. So, okay. So that's, so that's I'm, where I'm at. So when I'm hearing your, you tell your story, I'm hearing a lot of successes. You have a plan of uh, tackle certain things. 
you have a plan, a delegation. So when the night crew comes in, they know what to do. Mm -hmm. Third thing, you're going to focus on what's important for the store. I mean, if you're one person, you can't manage everything 100%. So if the cereal, cereal, cereal doesn't get stocked properly, you may have to let that go, but you make sure the lines are down, right? There's certain priorities yep. there. Yep. So I hear you have a plan. I hear you have a lot of successes. And that's your, you know, feather your cap, I would say, the reason why you're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. But why do you think you're going to fail if you have a plan? Um, I won't fail as badly as if I went in like a chicken with my head cut off because okay. there's when they do their store walkthrough every morning, they tick all the boxes. They want all the boxes ticked. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting, I'm using my judgment and my experience to say, these are the important boxes, which absolutely have to get ticked. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones that, you know, guys, we're just going to have to give it away. Okay. And, and deal with it. And if they, and if they choose not to agree with me, then tomorrow when I go in, what are my consequences for that? Mm -hmm. and, okay. and, and, and be able to go and logically say, this is why I felt this was most important. And if you don't agree with me, then you need to train me and educate me and rank them for me so that I'm meeting your expectations. Mm -hmm. So I heard again, you know, the, so obviously if there's hundred boxes, probably not it's probably 20 let's, let's the first it 10 it's easier i'm math. sorry let's make it I'm 10 because it's easier math in my head all right 10 boxes there's probably five boxes that are the biggest ones they go for right right so you already know what they are because it's the same list every day you know what needs to be checked off if it's box eight and nine ah they can kind of give away but at least more than 50 percent you want this box is ticked as they need to do an awesome job okay right. again you tell me your success and how you're going to make sure things done but you didn't tell me what the fear was. Like, what's the emotion behind that? Ooh, the emotion is that my closing checkers are going to call in sick. That my that the courtesy clerks are either going to call in sick or they're going to find a way to try to sneak out early. Mm -hmm. To really just annoys not only me when I'm a checker, but annoys the front end manager, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, when I was there on Wednesday night, there's a couple of a uh, couple of courtesy clerks, you know, the baggers who like to who tend to wander and hide and disappear. And I turned to one of them. I hurt my foot the other day, and I still can't walk on it. Poor dog hasn't been walked in three days now. Oh man! And, oh, I know. We go from eight to ten miles and eight to ten k's a day to like around the block, and it kills. Me. Anyway, so I was standing there and I said, "Look, Tyrese, here's the deal. I can't walk. I can't chase you. I need this stuff done." but I still have the ability to pick up something and whip it in your general direction if you're not doing what I want you to do. So no silly buggers, no playing games, get it done. You have an hour and 15 minutes, deal with it. He dealt with it and he got it all done and he got it done to my standard, great. which is great. So I'm hoping that people are there that I can be firm mm -hmm. and be a good manager and say, this is what I need from you and this is why I need it from you. My fear is, is that, as usually happens two or three days a week, um, half the staff calls in sick. That's that can be, that can be painful. I mean, staff calls in sick during the holiday or a rush. I, if today was Valentine's Day, right? That would be hell. Yes. And Valentine's Day, the end of it was hell because a couple of people snuck out early without checking in. They just kind of quietly checked, you know, and then scooted out the back door. And it was like, what the fuck? Sorry, <laughs> you know, and, okay. that made, and, and, that, and that made things hard, but I, but I wrote it down on my list and those people got reprimanded on Monday and Tuesday. Now they're not speaking to me. I don't care. This isn't about show friends. It's about show business, baby. Um, so I, I hope that the afternoon crew that starts at two is all there. Mm -hmm. And if so you're your not, theory is you get there, half the boys and girls are out to play, let's say. Yep. There's nobody there, mm -hmm. but. If that's your fear, you know, you have a plan to combat that fear. I have a plan to combat that fear and I have a plan to minimize my consequences. Okay. And so if you have a plan, which, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. So you may have it where that happens or it doesn't. I want to bring some to your attention. If you become the PSC person in charge, regardless if it's the day where nobody's there but you or the day where everybody's there, you're going to have to deal with these situations. 
Mm-hmm. The o- only thing you can manage is your response to these situations. Because mm-hmm. if you come to PIC and everything's going good, you come in, everybody's there, but they might have that one day everybody just disappeared. You can't all of a sudden say, well, I give up my job and I quit being PIC because Bill, Bo- Bill, Bill, Bob, Susie, and Johnny are not here. You say, well, I'm just going to roll with it. So if you already have a plan, you know these things do happen because you experience it. You have to call a couple of names in. Why then do you have so much fear of not being able to handle it if you know what to do because it already exists? Um, another big fear is that uh, I am not clear what the consequences are. Mm-hmm. The only thing I can see as a consequence is that I'm in this job uh, with one other person. They want to see which of the, which of us, we both had to compete for it, which one of us is going to rise to the occasion. So I may not have this, I may not have this position permanently. So I don't know. And I want to put my best foot forward every time. I am assuming, and assuming makes an ass of you before it makes an ass of me, but it's still going to make an ass of me. Um, I'm going by logic and experience to determine what things are most important for the store, for the store to look good, for you know, the food all to be safe and rotated and put away properly and things like that. And either the manager is going to agree with me and see logically agree with my logic or they're not. And I won't know until tomorrow. Right. When they check the boxes, correct? When they check the boxes. So they're checking the boxes about 7 a.m. and I'll be in at 2.30 tomorrow. And that's when I'll find out. So there's less dread today than there was Wednesday night when I found this out and was like, oh shit, and panicked a little bit. And there was less yesterday and there's less today. But it doesn't make me feel good that um, I've had only a few hours training. I've had one other shift. The other guy has had like eight or nine shifts and has been taught everything he needs to be taught. So I, I feel like I'm being set up for failure. There's just that kind of little niggling Back in my mind, I've been set up. Okay. So let's go back to the first thing you said. Obviously, you're competing with, I don't know his name, let's say Bob. You're competing with Bob. I don't Mm -hmm. use Bob, Billy, and Johnny, Susan a lot. I don't want common names, maybe. (laughs) But anyways, you're competing with Bob, and obviously, the best girl girl or guy or whatever wins. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And your fear is, is that... If you don't rise to the occasion, which can be anything can happen, because this can happen on his shift too. You don't know if this yeah. happened to him, has has happened to him, or will happen to him. But the idea is having two people, you and Bob, compete and who will rise to the occasion. So if everything goes astray, like you assume it will, remember you create an assumption about this, mm-hmm. wouldn't this be the time where you actually are able to rise to the occasion? I'm pretty confident I can rise to the occasion. And I've, you know, I, just in my, with the catering job for 18 years, I was very good at being the octopus that for every action, there were eight equal and opposite reactions, um, which is very stressful and can, and can, be, it can be extremely tiring. Um, I don't think that in the shifts that uh, Bob has had, um, he hasn't been, his resources, I know that he has not had the lack of resources that I'm about to have this evening. Okay. So I'm so, just going to roll with it. I'm just going to well, roll with it. You're just going to roll with it and you're going to rise to the occasion. Because remember, if you become the person in charge, you wouldn't have to deal with situations like this. So I when I would. To, yeah, all the time. So, and, yep, I'm used to it. And yeah, there's all that stuff. But it's just, it's the second time in a new place. And I just want to keep putting my best foot forward. Yeah. So. You're fearful of that you're going to fail. And failure is not just, oh, I failed, okay, no, next day tomorrow. Your failure is more deeper than that. And it's deeper than the fact that, you know, getting some promotion increases your income. Get some promotion increases your income so you can make sure you have enough money for you and your son. So it's, you know, let's, let's acknowledge the fact that it, it's, it's, it's a real stressor. The stressor is if I don't get this, I won't get the money to take care of my family and myself. Absolutely. So, Let's acknowledge that first. So I want to tell our audience out there, if you're going through a fear, the first thing you do not want to do is oh, I go away and just in the background, dust it off. No, it won't go away. You it won't go away. Braces. 
you got to embrace it. You got to acknowledge. You got to acknowledge why is this fear? Like I'm acknowledging now in, in Denise's case where the fear is not just, well, I'm, I'm going to lose and I mean, I get the job. No, the fear is if I don't get it, I don't have the money to take care of my family. That's the whole point of me asking for promotion because if you were satisfied with your income previously, let's say income, you would be asking for promotion. But I have to be a checker, work my nine to five or whatever it is and have a nice day. Yeah. See you guys See tomorrow. You later. Yeah. That's but it. But being no. a checker isn't paying my bills, so I need to make more money. <laughs> You know, because I need to pay for the she shed, you know, yeah, you do. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, she insurance the she shed. exactly, you know, when the she shed is part of, you know, there's my section, which is the she shed and part of the apartment is Kincaid's man cave. And, you know, I'm trying to keep a roof over both of our heads here. And, yeah. you know, it's been really frustrating going to work and working my, you know, 40 hours or less at the little checker rate and not being able to pay my bills. So this is really important to get this promotion so that A, I have 40 hours and B, I have a living income. You know, and, so and thank you for acknowledging that because yeah. that is true for you. Yeah. That is true that it has ramifications. Yep, yeah. there's a lot riding on this. So to there's a lot riding on this one. What I, what I done what I've done. I'll share this with my you guys here too. I did something very simple. All right, let me get my right post note. So here's a post note. Right, I saw your your piece of paper. What I did. Is I was taught this. So on front, you have the non-sticky side. On the back, you have the sticky side. Right. For you guys that are watching this for the first time, haven't seen any of my vlogs, what I did is on the back, which is the non-sticky side, because I'm using post-it note, I put down what I'm feeling. Feelings are real for you. Stress, worry, money. Am I doing all I can? Those are my feelings and those I'm going through. Now, the reason why I put it on the back of this post note is because what I tend to do is I put it on my computer and on the front, I put my affirmations. First affirmation to share with you guys, I'm worthy. First it was, I deserve this, but mm -hmm. then I had switched it because energy I'm worthy has more energy than I deserve this. Second affirmation for myself, because you affirmation can be whatever they are. Be kind to self. This is my second affirmation. My third affirmation, be patient. My fourth affirmation is trust the process. My third affirmation is, sorry, my fifth affirmation, not third, all experiences have value. My sixth affirmation, be that storyteller. My seventh affirmation, breathe and meditate. And the reason why I put my feelings on the back is because it's energy and it's real, it's present. So you can't mm -hmm. say it doesn't exist. The reason I put it on uh, my affirmations on the front is that I want to acknowledge these are true. And what do I want to show up? So if my fear, my thought, so if I'm feeling stress, okay, trust the process. If I'm feeling worried, all expenses have value. If I have money worry, um, my other thing is be patient, trust the process. Mm -hmm. So these are simple things that Denise, you can do or and but the list that I can do because it, they really do have a lot of power energy and I just put it right here on my computer. So when I log in the morning or log out at night, it's at the point now I actually remember them. So it actually helps remember them. So I have to keep looking at my computer, but so things that are going to help because whatever you're going through, the fear of failure, the fear of what may happen is real. And uh, if we don't acknowledge these real um, feelings, they will keep coming up. And it's like snowball. Oh, I'll, I'll put it off. Oh, dang it, it got bigger. I'll, I'll put it off. Oh, dang, it's got bigger before you know it. That assumption, right? Our fear, false evidence, fear, real, will become real. It literally will show up on your doorstep. You're like, damn it. Why is it showing up? So acknowledging it, creating positive affirmations. Um, I'm going to share this to you guys and probably share with you, Denise. I had a call with somebody this morning. And I, I knew this person because we dated previously and didn't mm -hmm. work out, obviously. And um, she's going through a tough time. She's trying to find love and all that stuff. She's a little older. And first thing she says, uh, yeah, I'm going through this, this, this. I'm just going to think positive. And I said, okay. And she says, yeah. And she explains again. And then she tells me a story. The story was this. Um, I had a, I, I knew this guy. I'm dating this guy for seven years. We know each other but he doesn't see if he wants me. So I want him, but he doesn't want me. Then she gives me another story about the guy she met that the guy wanted her, but she didn't want him. I says, look, you know what? 
until you change your perspective or your view, these situations will keep happening. Because if you notice, they're the same thing. There's a guy you want that doesn't want you. And there's a guy that you want, but doesn't want you. They're equally the same. Yeah. Yeah. Just he wanted her and she didn't want him. So yeah. And, and it is the same. And it's all about ranking your priorities. I mean, when I was younger, it used to be the guy had to have a full head of hair and you know what? I, that's not a deal breaker anymore. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's all about changing your attitude and changing your perspective. Yeah, it really is. It's huge. And um, so I, I got the call and I said, look, if you want to interested in a free coaching session, let me know. And uh, so I'll let you know. But she was expecting me to tell her one or two things, being a coach, that it's going to honestly be a magic pill and fix her life. If that was true, I'd be a billionaire. Because I'd be selling yeah. it for a billion dollars. <laughs> Trust me. There's a yeah. pill I can give you or three things I can say to change your life. I would be a billionaire because I'd be selling it for a billion dollars. Trust me. Yes. And but you'll be not. using me as your little franchise person. So I get it my 35% cut. Thanks. Cut. <laughs> of course. <laughs> off the top. Of course. You went, you went off the top. <laughs> of course. Well, you know, here's another thing that I'm doing to, to prepare, to prepare myself for potential failure this afternoon and, and, and preparing to lower the consequences. And I even did this when I was in the corporate world, when I was in advertising, I had, I always had one suit that was more like that was my armor okay. so if i knew i was going into a difficult situation i wore the dove gray cutaway coat with the short skirt fantastic you know that but that was that was my power suit that was my i'm in my armor and nothing's going to hurt me or affect me today now i'm at safeway yes i have to wear my black polo and my jeans so i'm wearing my necklace that in morse code spells out badass because i am a badass i will get it done and if anybody can see the morse code on this necklace yes i have it on backwards because i'm a right-handed person it's a left-handed clip i haven't gotten it switched over yet but it says back it's so instead of saying badass to the world it's saying badass to my heart but that's okay Ooh, that's because okay. badass to my heart makes it work for me so that's my little, that's my little piece of armor I'm taking in with me today. And it's amazing because you know what you gave me, I just had deja vu when I was sales at Fry's time like 2003, 2004, what I would do is I would make sure I always had some kind of red tie on. Mm -hmm. It could be solid red. It can be black, but those power colors, right? Which are yep. charcoal, blue and black. So I always had charcoal slacks and a red tie are blue slacks and a red tie because of those power colors. Mm -hmm. And those things, let's 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 talk about metaphysics. Met metaphysics, those <laughs> things, oh man, what's going on with me today? I don't know. Need more <laughs> Honey, you better get come <clears throat> over my she shed because it ain't working I know. today. I think you <laughs> it's have not, not today. I, I, I think you need time in the she shed. <laughs> I do. You know, so let's talk about metaphysics. Those things have energy. My charcoal pants, my blue pants, my red tie, Denise's badass necklace, and her uh, business suit, charcoal, was it, or gray, those yep. have energy. If you get to use these things or meditate to combat that fear or that failure or whatever happening, be consistent at embracing those. Mm -hmm. Okay, be consistent at doing what you need to do to make sure you, and um, how can I say this? embrace that power bring it inside you and go forward mm -hmm. right that's what it is and if you gotta do it you could do it you know that's the best thing to do whatever it is you need to do embrace that be consistent at it and when you need to take out your closet put on that suit put on that necklace put on that tie whatever tie you have or even paint your fingernails a different color or put your hair a certain way like you know a ponytail up and tight like you're in the military whatever it is embrace that energy take it and freaking run with it and also know that as long as you're telling the truth if you're documenting what's going on and you're telling the truth about what's going on that's also another way that you can deflect any and reduce the consequences oh yes just tell the truth this that. is what this is what happened this is you know this is the event that happened this is how i dealt with it this were immediate ramifications here's the how i cleaned up the mess of whatever happened and just tell the truth. That's all you can do. And that's, that's the best way. I love yeah. it. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So yeah. I hope you guys learned. We all face fears. Mm -hmm. What how to identify what the fear is. Because the fear really for Denise wasn't the fact that 
there's nobody there to help her. The fear is that, well, if I don't perform well, I won't get the raise I need so I can take care of my family, so I can take care of my roof or my head. So identify the feeling behind the fear because you mm -hmm. have to release that energy. Embrace things that give you power. It can be out with nature, uh, business suit, tie, whatever you do, embrace those things that give you energy. And always ask yourself, what I'm feeling, is it true to me? And is it real? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, is it an assumption? Because it could be just an assumption. Could be, it could be, it could be an assumption. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it is, but I'd rather go in prepared for everything going wrong than everything going right and having an easy night. Yeah, I hope you have an easy night. That's what I'm hoping for. I hope I you have an easy too. night, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Exactly, because so, I still can't stand on my right foot. So I don't know. <laughs> the other night, and of course, I'm short, I'm vertically challenged. So I have yeah. to do a lot of stocking and facing on these tall shelves. So I have this yeah. dual. <laughs> this yeah. holding stool that I drag on the wheels behind me. Uh, uh, <laughs> climbing up through it. <laughs> you go, mm, boom, boom, and there you make it, right? It's hilarious. Everybody laughs, and I'm and I'm glad that I am like the head of the entertainment committee <laughs> because they all laugh at me about it. And I'm cool with that because I'm laughing at me too. Just as long as I don't fall off the bloody stool. That's all I care that's, about. That's all matter. That's all you care about. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So, well, guys, yeah, thanks for listening. Yes. Oh, go, go first. Oh, I was just going to say, don't be too hard on yourselves. Just plan ahead, prepare, tell the truth, find out that, as Ron said, find the root of the problem, which is for me, fear of not getting a permanent pay raise and not being able to take care of my family, which in this day and age is pretty scary because not very many people are hiring right now. So, you know, roll with it, embrace it, just tell the truth, get through it, and most likely all will be right with the world. Oh yeah. As long as you tell the truth, you acknowledge the fear and you embrace it, everything will work. God, soul, spirit, universe, everything will work out. Trust me. And then you have a grand slam day. Yep. Back, back, back. It's going, it's, it's going. going. It's going. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> So as always, guys, my name is Ronald Johnson, a mindfulness coach. You can find me under www.ronjohnsoncoaching.com. If you're interested in hearing more of what I do and how can I help you, hit that discovery call button, which is right there. It doesn't hurt. Book a 15, 20 minute discovery call with me. Let's talk about what's going on because let's release that energy. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. Thanks for listening. And I'm Denise Lewis, and I can be found at www.grandslamcoaching.com. Contact me, reach out to me so we can have a discovery call, and let's help you get to be the best, you know, put on your best performance every single day. Make every day a Grand Slam day. I love it. Yeah. Out the park, out the park. Yeah. Thanks, exactly. everybody, for listening. Have a wonderful day.